Welcome, this is the class of 2009 Occupational Therapy Assistance. Today we will be demonstrating the proper use of goniometry. For shoulder flexion, the subject is seated with the humerus in neutral position. The axis of the goniometer is center of the humerus just distal to the acromion process on the lateral aspect of the humerus. The stationary bar and the movable bar are parallel to the trunk. The client's arm is raised in front of her body in a sagittal plane of movement. The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges to 170 degrees. For shoulder extension, the subject is seated with no obstruction behind the humerus and the humerus is in a neutral position. The position of the goniometer is the same as for shoulder flexion. The client's arm is brought in the back of the body in a sagittal plane of movement. The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges to 60 degrees. For shoulder abduction, the subject is seated with the humerus in adduction and external rotation. The axis of the goniometer is on the acromion process on the posterior surface of the shoulder. The stationary bar is parallel to the trunk and the movable bar is parallel to the humerus. The client's arm is raised to the side of the body in a frontal plane of movement. The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges to 170 degrees. For shoulder horizontal abduction, the subject is seated with the shoulder to be tested, abducted to 90 degrees, the elbow extended with the palm facing down. The axis of the goniometer is over the acromion process. The stationary bar is parallel over the shoulder toward the neck and the movable bar is parallel to the humerus on the superior aspect. The client's arm is moved toward the back of the body in the horizontal plane of movement. The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges to 40 degrees. For shoulder horizontal adduction, the subject and the goniometer are the same as for horizontal abduction. The client's arm is moved in front of the body in the horizontal plane of movement. The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges to 130 degrees. For shoulder internal rotation, the subject is seated with the humerus adducted against the trunk the elbow at 90 degrees, and the forearm in mid position and perpendicular to the body. The axis of the goniometer is on the olecranon process of the elbow, and the stationary bar and movable bar are parallel to the forearm. The client's forearm is swung toward the body through a horizontal plane of movement. The humerus must remain adducted. The range of motion begins at zero degrees and is completed at 60 degrees. For an alternate position to measure internal rotation, the subject is seated with the humerus abducted to 90 degrees and the elbow flexed to 90 degrees. The axis of the goniometer is on the olecranon process of the elbow and the stationary bar and movable bar are parallel to the forearm. The client's forearm is swung down gently, keeping the humerus parallel to the floor. The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges to 70 degrees. For shoulder external rotation, the subject is seated with the humerus adducted, the elbow at 90 degrees, and the forearm in mid position perpendicular to the body. The axis of the goniometer is on the olecranon of the elbow and the stationary bar and movable bar are parallel to the forearm. The client's forearm is swung out from the body through a horizontal plane of movement. The humerus must remain adducted. 
The measurement begins at zero degrees and ranges up to 80 degrees. For the alternate position to measure external rotation of the shoulder, the subject is seated with the humerus abducted to 90 degrees, elbow flexed to 90 degrees, and the forearm pronated. The axis of the goniometer is on the olecranon process of the elbow, and the stationary bar and movable bar are parallel to the forearm. The client's forearm is swung up gently, keeping the humerus parallel to the floor. The measurement begins at zero degrees and can range up to 90 degrees. For elbow flexion, the subject is seated, standing, or supine with the humerus adducted and externally rotated and forearm supinated. The axis of the goniometer is placed over the lateral epicondyle of the humerus at the end of the elbow crease. The stationary bar is parallel to the midline of the humerus and the movable bar is parallel to the radius. The client's forearm begins in an extended position and is raised in a sagittal plane of movement. The measurement begins at zero degrees and can range up to 135 to 150 degrees. For forearm supination, the subject is seated with the humerus adducted, elbow at 90 degrees, and forearm in mid position. A pencil is placed in the subject's hand so that it is held perpendicular to the floor. The axis of the goniometer is over the mid shaft of the third proximal phalanx. The stationary bar is perpendicular to the floor and the movable bar overlays the shaft of the pencil. The client's forearm is rotated laterally around the ulna. The measurement begins at zero degrees and can range to 80 to 90 degrees. For forearm pronation, the subject is seated with the humerus adducted, elbow at 90 degrees, and forearm in mid position. A pencil is placed in the subject's hand so that it is held perpendicular to the floor. The axis of the goniometer is over the third proximal phalanx. The stationary bar is perpendicular to the floor and the movable bar overlays the shaft of the pencil. The client's forearm is rotated medially around the ulna. The measurement begins at zero degrees and can range to 80 to 90 degrees.